and we're back with rank 18. I believe at least that most people are going to be rank 18 in this match. Looks like we have a battleship heavy game, which is well obviously pretty good for me. There is an independence on the enemy team and a Nuremberg. Mutsuki on our team we have Farragut, Molotov, uh, Fuso, Bayern, two New Mexicos. Okay. So the two New Mexicos are going to be actually our main uh, fighting core along with the Bayern and the Fuso, but we're going to need our destroyer to live because, well, all those battleships mean that the destroyer is going to be really, really useful. So let's get our planes up running. Let's hope that the independence player is not very good because a really good American aircraft carrier player can really disrupt a Japanese carrier player quite a lot. So there's this. That guy has an Italian name, it means like uh, picking your nose. Essentially, that's what it means, which is okay. Okay, so here come the dive bombers. Well, one dive bomber doesn't really tell me very much. The Independence has two loadouts um, of aircraft. Okay, no, never mind, it's the standard one. There's the standard one, which is one of each type of plane, one dive bomber, one torpedo bomber, and one fighter. Then there is the infamous fighter loadout, which is two fighters and a dive bomber, which is why I was quite apprehensive about, well, this one dive bomber, which might have meant, you know, only one dive bomber and then two fighters. That would have been really, really annoying to deal with. Of course, it was not to be the case. Uh, the other loadout that the independent sports is the strike loadout that almost nobody uses, uh, which is two dive bombers and one um, this guy is really, really mad at me. I'm not sure as to why. <laughs> He's really pissed. He's like, don't go so hard on the planes, and I'm like, what? Okay, that's the one cruiser, so yeah, my dive bombers are not really going to be that useful over here. I'm just trying to uh, run this F6F through as many of my uh, ships as possible because he was taking essentially a fire from my ships. But unfortunately I kind of missed micro and so I was not able to do much there. Okay, so we do have a little bit of a interesting thing happening here. This is probably where an enemy destroyer is hiding. So essentially, okay, there's the enemy destroyer. Let's try to attack the destroyer. It's not going to be easy. Okay. That's a... Uh, he may run into one with my torpedoes. What you want to do when attacking destroyers is trying to... Ah, oh, that right. Yeah, obviously. Uh, obviously that was a little bit... Oh, damn it. Okay. So at least they managed to get some damage in on that. So... Okay, so... What I was trying to do is get one line of torpedoes going so that the uh, destroyer was kind of forced to move forward and then hit him with another uh, strike from the flank. Fortunately, I kind of missed, so yeah, because I went a little bit too close with my second torpedo bomber squadron and so he was inside the range of the activation. Okay, so here comes some enemy dive bombers, which are, sorry, torpedo bombers, which for some reason are damaged. Now, I'm not sure if that means that he lost his entire first squadron because the independence has a bit of a problem if it's not uh, upgraded if the hull is not upgraded then the amount of reserves that it's got over here are not enough to completely replenish one squadron so essentially what you would have is uh, something like this where four fallen torpedo bombers are available instead of six and that looks like is what happened with him because he's got the same amount of planes and also his uh, dive bomber squadron. So essentially, we're kind of sort of safe from enemy aircraft because the guy has lost everything. 
Uh, he's lost all of his fighters because I can see that from that uh, kill count that I had over here. These are the plane scaled counter. And that was. Okay. Earlier that was up to five without having hit these bombers. So essentially what that meant was that my fighters had killed five enemy planes. Considering he had flown over that many uh, of my own ships, that means that almost certainly he had taken damage from my own aircraft or my own ships and aircraft. So he probably had lost at least another one of his planes to enemy fire. And in fact Easily enough, uh, the enemy fighters came back with only four men, I'm uh, sorry, planes left. So that pretty much basically means that the guy is a stock independence, so it's gonna be pretty easy for me to take out the rest of those planes. He's got like two dive bombers, two torpedo bombers, and two fighters left. So pretty much complete air superiority is gonna be mine soon enough. Unfortunately, he's still going to be able to panic my own guys, and I went a little bit too close to his fire. This one spread on the left is not going to be able to harm but at least the one in the center will be able to hit. Yeah, well, that was really bad on my part, but oh well. Still managed to deal some damage. Looks like no flooding, or at least he uh, repaired the flooding. But I'm going to be coming in with my dive bombers. He's regaining HP just in case you have played World of Warships. I'll explain this because battleships have an ability called Repair Party Consumable, and essentially what that does is it repairs damage done to the ship, so they can actually replenish HP, unlike some other types of ships that do not have this ability. And then, obviously, that means that he's going to be essentially in the long run even stronger than one thousand and this is gonna happen. Let's try to set on fire again. Oh wow, that was really unlucky. Hit him with three bombs but caused no fires. Which is really unlucky because if I had caused some more fires, he does not have a repair party. He's already taking damage as you can see this is my damage counter. Uh, so it's going up because I'm dealing damage to him over time from the fire that I've already caused on him. But unfortunately since he has managed to, well, get kind of lucky and avoid taking more damage from my fires, well, he will not die. If he had taken two or three fires, then he definitely would have died with 16,000 hit points. So right now I'm gonna be essentially just waiting for my um, torpedo planes to come in and finish off this fire, because he's gonna be a pretty easy uh, this guy is really, really, really weird. <laughs> I'm trying to make make sense of what he's actually saying, but it's a little bit of a hard task right now. So the Mutsuki actually has managed to escape my fighters. Let's go track him again. There he is. He's he's basically the main source of problems that we're gonna have because all the enemy ships are now battleships, and the aircraft carrier. Yes, he's alive, but he's out of plane. He's essentially just a floating hulk of uselessness. So, really, their main sort of battle line is the four battleships, which are very, very big, very, very easily spotted ships. So, their main sort of wild card is going to be the Splitsky Destroyer. So, we want to keep an eye out on him as much as possible. There goes the Byron. Now, okay, so the war fight is fairly low on HP. So, what we're going to do is we're going to send in one dive bomber to set him on fire, and then wait for him to actually use his damage control ability. And then come in with my second dive bomber to finish him off. Or at least that's the plan, not sure if it's gonna work. Okay, there goes the first dive bomber, looks like it's gonna be at least one fire good. If he's smart, he's not gonna repair. So far, he's not repairing. Uh, that could also be because he doesn't have a repair. So well, okay, he repaired, so let's move in with my second dive bomber. My fighters over here that were spotting the destroyer all got shot down. That's unfortunate, but oh well. I'm trying to like spot what kind of a course he's trying to take, but it looks like he's not really paying attention. You can see it because he's essentially uh, got his guns pointed this way, which means that uh, his view was also pointed this way. And 
yeah, he was just moving on the other, another direction, so that probably meant that he was not exactly looking at where he was going. Okay, so I managed to get two fires off, and that's probably going to be a kill. Uh, 13,000 hit points are not really that many. Uh, and with two fires, I'm going to be able to burn through these very quickly, as you can see. Oh, okay, so he's, he's used his damage control ability, which is why his hit points are regaining themselves at such a quick rate. But maybe, maybe I'll still be able to save him out. Of course, I say it, you don't have now Torpedo's plane. Oh, he's insane. <laughs> but what he's trying to say is, he's trying to say that now I don't have Torpedo Bombers. He's wrong. <laughs> he's wrong, I do have Torpedo Bombers. Okay, whatever. Let's go finish off the score spike, because, yeah, whatever. Actually, I'm wasting my fighters over here trying to take out the spotter plane. This is a spotter plane. What it does is it increases the range at which these battleships can fire their main guns. And the reason why I'm trying to take it out is because obviously I want my ships to have spear range. I don't want them to have the spotter aircraft up. But a better usage for my fighter would have been to hunt down the destroyer. Because the enemy still has a destroyer somewhere. And I don't want them to have a destroyer somewhere. Because, well, quite rude. Uh, especially because I'm moving in actually the wrong direction. The enemy destroyer was spotted somewhere over here, and so if I'm moving over here, I'm ha having a higher chance of actually running into them, which would not be very fun. Uh, right now, I could attack the aircraft carrier, however, it is pretty useless to do that, because essentially the aircraft carrier has no planes left, so I can easily just ignore him. That should be a kill on that New Mexico. Oh, oh, 600 and something hit points. Okay, never mind, it's dead. So, this Fuso class battleship is gonna be the only battleship left on the enemy team, and the battleships are gonna be the easier targets, so I'm gonna take him out first. I'm gonna have my torpedo bombers come in and flood him. Hopefully, that will scare him into using their repair party. That should be a perfect run. Maybe a little bit too close, actually. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, that was definitely too close. So I'm gonna bring in my dive bombers. The enemy uh, destroyer is actually taking damage from our own destroyer. And that's good because our destroyer is a Farragut, which means it's an American destroyer. American destroyers compared to Japanese destroyers usually have much better guns. So what that means is in a destroyer duel, the destroyer with the better guns usually wins because the Japanese destroyers have terrible guns and they have good torpedoes. Torpedoes are better against large ships because they're very slow. Uh, obviously, ship fire torpedoes are very slow. They take a lot of time to get to their target. So against a slower, not very maneuverable ship like a battleship, it's fine. But against a fast-moving ship like a destroyer, you don't want to use torpedoes. You want to use guns. So obviously, having the better guns in that case is much better. So the American ship is better in a duel. Okay, so let's take out the Fuso. One fire is going to be enough to take him out, but just to be safe, I've got this one torpedo, uh, torpedo bomber squadron coming in. I'm going to finish him off just in case he uh, actually sees me, which hasn't happened because there's an icon that pops up here whenever you... And actually, I can probably just wait for him to die. Well, as I wanted to say, there's an icon that pops up here when you get spotted. And that hasn't happened, so essentially, I'm fairly certain that I'm not spotted by him, because there's this island in the way. So there he goes, I'll get the arsonist achievement because I killed him with fire. And I've got 100,000 damage, which is pretty impressive in a ranked game. Okay, so... Get our torpedo bombers working on this independence. That's not gonna be a good one. Yeah, I essentially reduced the range because, well, he was trying to. Wow. Okay, sure. He still managed to make it into the 500 meter exclusion uh, sort of arming range, but he's gonna die anyway. She's gonna be the fourth kill. Wow. Okay. I tried to say thank you to the guy who said that I'm good, but yeah, I didn't manage to actually do it. So let's actually go look at this score, because I haven't done that yet. Okay, so team score, 
essentially just makes you look at uh, what people have done. And actually, in terms of experience, it seems like he destroyed it a lot better than me. So, well, good job on him. Uh, we definitely did pretty well in this game. And as you can see, the power of support ships. These battleships were sort of our main battle line, who sort of took the brunt, dealt damage in return, and sort of made presence as a name. But what really, really decided the game was the fact that their independence player was very bad, and their Mutsuki was just kind of shut down by a combination of me and the Farragut, because the Farragut having the uh, sort of superior firepower against the Mutsuki managed to sort of keep him away from our ships. So our ships were able to have the support on their side, their ships were alone, and despite their war spike doing quite well, and their Fusa also doing quite well, they were not able to do much in the end. So then I'll see you with, I believe, rank 17, because that was rank 18. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you then.